This video is brought to you by Ripple.it, a powerful platform for educators, learners, and developers that makes coding and collaborating easy. Use the name Sean Pritchard in the link below to sign up today and start programming in your browser. All right, so today we're going to continue where we left off on our last lesson with JavaScript loops, and we're gonna discuss uh, a few different data structures in the next video, and we're going to discuss higher order functions uh, that are used for iteration and looping. Now, higher order functions uh, are similar to callbacks. You might be familiar with those, and they can take one or more functions as arguments or return them as a function as its result. Basically, they're functions that operate on other functions, either by taking them as an argument or by returning them. And these are what are called higher order functions. Now, the term higher order functions came from mathematics, where the distinction between functions and other values was taken more seriously. Uh, now, these functions are methods that we can use for iteration in JavaScript uh, through different types of data structures. And in the next video, we're going to discuss these different types of data structures um, and their principles in iteration and looping. Now, higher order functions allow us to use abstraction over actions, as well as values that they come in several different forms. Now, as you've seen in the last video, we use loops for many different situations and circumstances uh, to loop through primitive values, objects and arrays, reference types and such. And today we're going to talk about these higher order functions with the for each loop. All right, so now let's go ahead and start talking about our higher order function, the for each loop. Now I could have brought this into the last uh, video and talked to you about it with the loops, but there's a specific reason I did it and I wanted to do it here. Now let's go ahead and let's look at all the different loop constructs and let's discuss what they actually do. Now in essence, the for loop and the for in loop, we are grabbing a reference to the actual index. We have access to the index values of the array or the array object, whatever is in the other array, whether it's numbers or values, whatever, we can access the index using the for loop and the for in loop. Now we can't do that with the for each loop or the for of because these are built just to grab the elements out of an array. And that's why this is important to understand these different concepts and these constructs of for loops. Now that we know what all of them do, let's go ahead and test out the for each loop and then we'll go start talking about our iterative data structures uh, that help us loop uh, in JavaScript. So let's go down here and let's undo this. And you can see here, I've got an array with two values in it. And um, the reason I have an array here is because we can establish an array uh, and use the for each directly on it because it has a built-in array method. That's what makes this a higher um, order function is that uh, it provides us the availability to grab these elements inside of here. Plus it has built-in array methods specifically for arrays. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. You see that we output to the screen, loop one, A, loop two, be pretty simple right now let's try it on a another prototype setup where we're actually uh, going to establish a variable array and it's got a bunch of values in it and uh, then we're going to use the prototype for each on the end of the R array similar to what we did up here but we're just uh, transmuting it through an actual variable and then we're going to pass a parameter here element and we're going to console log it out and you see here that it actually works the same too. When we loop through, we get all the values no matter what they are. Now let's go ahead and let's look at another proof of concept here for the for each value. And that is um, what it can actually do as far as grabbing elements and why it doesn't grab indexes. Now I've got an array here and I've got an empty variable in block scope to let. Um, initialize to zero okay now what we're going to do is I'm going to undo this and we're going to console log that element I'm gonna clear the screen and let's run this now you see that I've outputted all the numbers just like we did up above here all right it's looping through and that's just from this console log and it's it's passing the parameter values of everything through the array to that so we can output it to the screen now I've got this other console log down here that's just outputting the number of callback runs and that's because for each uses callbacks in its actual functionality, the method of it. And this is why it has a built-in array method because the built-in array method facilitates using callbacks. And if you don't know what callbacks are, uh, go check out one of my other videos on callbacks where we go through those. Um, and if not, um, if you do know what they are, then you probably know um, what we're doing here. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and let's undo this real quick. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to increment the values that we pass through our empty variable here. Um, and we are going to um, enumerate those through this console log here. Now what this does is you're going to see it's going to count the actual values. So if we were trying to count the actual values, the number of values in the array, um, this is how we would have to do it. Where if we were using the for loop, um, we can iterate um, and instantiate it through the for loop. Or if we use the for in, then we can get the number of actual values in there as opposed to the values or the elements themselves. Now let's go ahead and let's undo this one and we'll see that um, this is the only way we can use it for each loop to actually add up all those values um, because we can add up the elements real easily by adding the number and multiplying it together. Now here's my proof of concept and that is if we take the array itself and we use the index of which is supposed to only output the index values for this array and you're going to see here what actually happens. So let's go ahead and clear the console and let's run this. All right, so we got a lot of stuff here. Let me go ahead and turn some of this stuff off. But you're going to see that um, we are actually not getting the index values, we're getting the actual elements themselves. And that's what is different about the for each loop, and that's what makes it a higher order function, is that we can work directly with the elements in array. It doesn't care about the index values. Um, so if we try to grab the index values, we're not gonna be able to do so. Um, and also it's a supported callback function, and it's a higher order function that facilitates array methods. So it's very important to use uh, when you're trying to loop through and grab values and manipulate values um, on their own. You can store the values in different objects like we did here with this num callback runs and then you can manipulate those values or if we had an array of objects, um, you know, say if it was a, a username uh, with the email and your phone number and it was a sign up form and we wanted to use a loop function for all the people that we had um, who were using your application. Um, you know, we'd want them to update their phone number for instance we wouldn't want to have to go grab the index value because if we grab an index value and we grab the wrong index value we could be deleting somebody else's phone number um, so that this way we can you know prototype our way to the information of that person's profile and they can directly work with the element in the array um, via this method so that's what the for each method does. So now let's go ahead and let's get into talking about uh, these data structures in the next video where we're going to break down all the data structures, map and set, including weak map and weak set, uh, to actually show you how they have built in iteration and why we would use them in looping. And don't forget, if you've got any value from this video, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more awesome information about programming, data science, computer science in general, quantum computer science, and lots more. Hey, do you want to know what type of gear I'm using or what type of computer build I've got? Or maybe you're just looking for quality gear that has been tested and researched personally by me. Well, if so, head over to kit.co forward slash Sean to find out.